So we're going to demo uh, a few things for you right here uh, in front of you so you can see how they're made. One of them is a Spanish rice pilaf, which we're going to have for lunch. Uh, we're also going to have uh, tempeh chorizo tacos. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make chorizo using tempeh. And then I'm going to talk you through how I made the dressing. We're going to have a Caesar salad uh, as well and uh, some grilled tofu to go on the Caesar salad. So I, t I tend to come at my cooking with a pretty uh, minimalistic approach. I like things to be simple. That way I can kind of do it again later. Uh, I try to use ingredients that are pretty simple also and not too complicated. And I, I keep my cooking pretty, pretty real. I don't use a lot of packaged stuff. And it's actually a lot cheaper to eat, to eat that way too. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Spanish rice pilaf and I'm just gonna dive in and get going on it. And anato seed, anato. No, that's fine, that's fine. It's a Spanish word. Anato is a seed that is um, used in a lot of Spanish cooking. You can actually come look at it if you want. It has a little bit of an aroma, but the big thing that annatto is used for is as a coloring agent, and it's gonna make the rice really a nice color red. But it's, it's a very unique flavor. You don't find it uh, commonly. And so we're gonna use that in our Spanish rice. It's a very common uh, uh, element in something called sofrito, which is actually what we're gonna make first before the rice. If you look down, there's a note at the bottom, and we're gonna make this seasoned vegetable mixture to cook our rice with. And that mixture, you can make that any other time without making the rice and use it in beans, use it uh, in several other things. So it's, it's like a standard Spanish flavored base that you can take and use in a soup, use in rice, use in beans. So it's, it's a very versatile thing. Um, yeah. So we're gonna get started. Let me uh, get, make sure this is working. And so I'm gonna put some oil in just a little bit and so what I want to do is take my time with these onions. And that's really where most of your flavor development is, is in time. That's your best element when you're cooking. And if you can take the time with it, please do that. If you can't take time with it, cook anyway, okay? Because it's still going to taste a lot better than anything else you can get. But um, so I'm going to give those, get them started here, the onions and the bell peppers. And I left out the jalapenos today. I brought some other things you can add heat with. I, I've had, so I, I live most of my life in the Southwest and my heat level is way up here. And so I've realized that I live in New York now. <laughs> I've had to moderate it. And as I've run into people from you know, the Midwest or other parts of the country, there's it's a wide range. And I'm, if I'm up here, I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to bring it down enough unless I just take it out, so. But I did bring some, uh, some things over there that we'll put out with uh, lunch and you can heat it up a little bit. You would add those, you could throw those in now, you could throw them in later also. I would put them in now to kind of mellow them down a little bit. Yep. And what I'm wanting to do with the onions is to kind of give, and the bell peppers, give them a little chance to caramelize on the bottom of the pan. And uh, a lot of uh, times you'll see people, you know, kind of give you something to do, but you're actually kind of cooling things down. And it's best if you just kind of let it sit there. Let it, let it sit there a little bit. And mm, avoid that temptation of, I gotta stir. Give it a chance to, to caramelize some, you know, the, those that are against the bottom of the pan, then stir it and let them caramelize a little more. And if you can do that, the flavor is gonna develop a lot better. If you can't, that's fine too. Like I said, just the act of cooking for yourself is going to make your food so much better. Plus you're engaging in a, in a good way. And if you have a, a party, it's a good social thing. So, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out what I need to go in next. I've got my garlic already chopped somewhere here. And so I've got that. Okay, so let's see, what do I need? I need some annatto seed, right? And I need about a tablespoon of that. I'm just gonna throw it in here with my garlic. Um, you don't have to get you know, too crazy about your specifics. If you're a little over on something, that's fine. Don't get too focused on, oh my God, that's more than a teaspoon, unless it's salt, take it easy on that. <laughs> but it, cooking is extremely flexible and you've got so much leeway and uh, you'll find that you like it a little more with, uh, with a little more cumin in it or a little more chili pepper in it. So, that's just a starting point. Okay. And give this another stir. 
And I'm gonna put my seasonings in now. But pilaf is usually kind of, you know, the, the grains of rice are kind of <coughs> fluffy and not stuck together. And so what we're going to do uh, after I give this just a little more time is put our rice in and toast it a little bit. And then you wanna pour the stock in really hot. That way it doesn't have a time. You, if, if you put your stock in cold, it has to come up to temp and it's soaking into all the grains and so they get soft. We want it to like be hot when it goes in. We want some, you're gonna notice some sizzle, some sputter uh, when it goes in. And that's because we want the rice to really have that fluffy texture, okay? I'm putting the rice in dry, like that. You mean now? <laughs> yeah. And so when I put the rice in, it's going to lightly toast it. And if anybody wants to come look, you can. I think it's great if you want to come look. And, and like with the vegetables, I'm going to give it a few moments to toast some, and then I'm going to toss it around, let it toast some more. And there's a point at which you'll start, uh, if you're standing over the pot like I am, you'll start smelling the rice too. And that's kind of your, that's when you know, okay, it's time to put the stock in. You'll start smelling a little toasted nuttiness like, okay? So, and I'm actually smelling it right now. Pour it in. Yep. All right. And so it's already boiling, which is what I want. I want that rice to immediately start cooking. And so I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to set a timer for how long? Oh God. 20 minutes. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, so we'll set that for 20 minutes. I'm going to let this, uh, so when you, I put it in, I'm going to let it give it just a moment to, to boil and then I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer there for 20 minutes. And the, one of the other things that people want to do is go, is it going? Okay. <laughs> You want to keep all that heat and especially the steam in there. Uh, we, we want it to absorb all the stock and then it cooks in the steam that's in there too. So you want to keep that environment kind of secure. So this is like we're having a, you know, outdoor grill, but it's a, it's just a big hunk of cast iron. So we're going to have grilled tofu on our Caesar salad. And what I've done with that is I've, marinated it overnight. This is oil for the grill. So you can just dab it on. Probably right in the middle is where you want to go. Okay. Are you doing it right now? Not yet. Let it get a little hotter. So the marinade that I made is really intense. Okay. And uh, it's got a lot of fresh herbs in it and some fresh garlic, cloves, some ginger, and you can see the rest of the ingredients there. And basically you put most of it in a blender and, and run it to uh, get it mixed up really well. And then you drop in the fresh herbs like the rosemary and the parsley. And you see it's given the, temp the tofu a really uh, nice color instead of just being that stark white. You can tell there's a lot of flavor in there. And so uh, what we're gonna do is I marinated that overnight and uh, it soaks up the flavor really well. And we're gonna let Natalia do the grill. Boiler. So do your thing. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, just the middle. We're gonna, yeah. And the big thing about, yeah, that's good. Perfect. Do it. <laughs> yeah, get it more. Yeah, there we go. It's got a very small uh, radius there. Okay. Now, the big thing about grilling tofu is that you don't get in a hurry. Uh, you kind of let it sit still for about five minutes. And uh, there's something you'll see, uh, right now you don't see it, but you'll start seeing where these ridges are. You'll start seeing, it looks really dark brown, almost black. And when you start seeing that, you'll notice next, it's starting, you'll see it starting to lift off. And that's when you go and you, you flip it. If you flip it too soon and it breaks, you can still eat it. So it's, you get to eat your mistakes all the time, which is great. Um, so she's gonna let that sit there for a minute and I'll continue to talk about the marinade. Let me have that back. So this marinade is extremely rich uh, with flavor. There's all kinds of good things. Are there any, it, on the ingredients, or anything you're not familiar with? Yes? Um, dried marjoram. marjoram. Marjoram is a lot like oregano. Okay. It's a, 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 an herb, a leafy herb, and they grind it up. And if you didn't have marjoram, you could use oregano. So, but it, it's exactly, it's, it kind of fills that, that spot, that kind of flavor. 
What's the tamari? Tamari. Tamari is a, a wheat-free version of soy sauce. Yep. I'm having a hard time processing. I'm a bread fanatic. Yep. I understand its application in bread and leaven products, but I'm having a hard time understanding what nutritional yeast is. Could you speak for a moment about that and its use? Yeah, do we have a, 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 any nutritional yeast in the kitchen? Yeah, we do. Can you go grab some? Okay. Because I don't think I have that with me. So nutritional yeast is actually cultured in a lab. It's, it's, it's a living yeast like other yeasts are, but it's... The, Kind of like with everything, there's more specific types than we typically use. And so this is cultured in a lab specifically for its nutritional content. And the thing that it's extremely high in is B12, which is one of the things that uh, is often cited as being deficient in a vegan diet. And so there's uh, a brand called Red Star, which I'm hoping she finds. And it's, it's uh, got a very high B12 content. And that's what a lot of people use it for. Oh, here we go. This is actually from Bob's. So. Let's, I'm gonna take our plate and we'll put some of this on. It also has a very distinct aroma and flavor. Uh, some people say it tastes kind of nutty. Some people say it tastes kind of uh, cheesy. And in fact, a lot of people use it in a vegan mac and cheese. But it has a very distinct. Are you guys doing that? Yeah. Tonight? Uh, tomorrow. So I'll put, yeah. So it may be actually up here, maybe a little hard to, to get. So, but you can taste some if you want. A lot of people sprinkle it on their salad. I put it on, I'll steam some kale and put it on my kale or something like that. Uh, it's really tasty uh, and extremely good for you. Yep. And you ready? ready? She's going to flip them. Bravo. It. Yeah. Woo. Perfect. She said she was nervous about this. And I said, I've seen naturals before and you're a natural. Let's just do it. So give us a little more time and then you can throw them in there and you just turn this off. Okay. So let me talk a little more about something that will make it a lot um, more effective uh, to marinate something. So what I want to do I want to get this out of the water, first of all, okay? And so it's like a sponge, right? So there's still a ton of water inside the block of tofu itself. And in fact, if I were to, to squeeze it, you would see some coming out. But what I like to do is I'll put it on a plate. Thank you. And I'll put another plate on top. And then I'll weight it down, um, maybe with some more more hardware i actually have a little you can some people put it, i've heard people say they put their encyclopedia on top uh, nobody buys those anymore so uh sometimes people put you know a pan of water on top i take the base of my blender and set it on top but just just that it doesn't have to be high tech at all and what it's doing is it's pressing all that extra liquid out which means when I put it in the marinade, it's gonna soak it all back up again. And that's how you get the flavor in there. And oftentimes, uh, did our timer go off? No. Uh, oftentimes people say tofu has no flavor and it's really just a matter of technique. If you squeeze out the water and then you let it soak up the marinade, there's gonna be a lot of flavor in there, okay? I think those are done. Let's take them off. And, woo! Look at that. And nothing left on the grill. Bravo. So before I move on too far, any questions about this right here? No? How long do you usually do that for? I will do it for like 10 minutes or so. Oh, okay. uh, some people do it a half hour. There's a lot of water on the plate, which means I'm in good shape for getting some flavor. Ooh. Yeah, I know, right? Scary. You know she's way over there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I cut it in half that way, and then I'm just gonna turn it up and flip it and cut it into other pieces. It doesn't really matter. You can cube it however you wanna cut it. And then I'm gonna just, just put it in here. And um, 
this is something you want to let sit like overnight or something. So uh, put that in the fridge and let it marinate overnight. And you can leave it in there and, you know, you don't have to cook it all the next day. You can you cook some tomorrow and then some the next day and some the next day. You can use that marinade for tempeh as well. And, we, and if you use it for tempeh, you don't need to press it. Tempeh has no water content. It's just, and we're gonna use tempeh. I'm glad you asked that question. What is tempeh? So tofu is made with soy, right? It's soy that's been uh, fermented and then coagulated. Uh, it's in fact, the process of making tofu is a lot like the process of making cheese. It's pretty similar. Uh, they uh, put a coagulant in and it separates into curds and whey and they gather up all the curds and that's what tofu is. Tempeh is also made from soy, but they cook the beans for a shorter period of time and then they inoculate them with, with a mold, kind of like blue cheese is inoculated. So all the, uh, the beans that have been cooked down, it kind of spreads through and it, and it kind of bonds them into a solid, solid piece of tempeh. So let me open this up. How many of you have not had tempeh before? That's about half, okay. Tempeh is extremely useful. You can crumble it like, uh, like a dry sausage. You can cook it in planks like we did the tofu. You can leave it you know, in, a, in a solid block. Um, it's extremely versatile. I use it to, uh, like we're gonna do today to make tacos. I use it to make enchiladas. I use it to make burritos. I use it, I'll cook it with uh, potatoes for breakfast. Um, it's really unlimited as far as what you can do with it. It grills up really well because it holds together. It does not fall apart on a grill. The hardest part is getting it out of the damn package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll stay together really well. It's extremely durable. I did that to show you the hardest part. That's the hardest part, okay? Thank you, thank you. We survived together, <laughs> we made it. Okay, so, um, so it's a very solid, you know, thing. And that's because uh, that um, mold that they put in kind of forms it into a very solid cake, okay? And thunk, I can cut it like this. And uh, sometimes what I will do is, so see it's still holding together really well. And I'll cube it and it's great for a stir fry. Maybe I'll marinate it and then use it the next day in a stir fry. What we're gonna do today, however, is crumble it into a bowl and make it into taco filling because it crumbles up extremely well too. And you can, like that. So it crumbles almost like a ground beef would. So what I'm gonna do is uh, season it in a kind of like a Mexican sausage. You can change out one thing and it's an easy substitution and then it tastes more like Italian sausage, which is great. So if you take a look at the cumin seed, if you swap that out and put fennel seed instead, for example, it tastes like a, an Italian sausage. Everybody good? So she, she's uh, got this going here, and what I'm gonna do is um, measure out the seasonings that I'm gonna use in the tempeh, and then we'll mix the two and throw them in with our onions, okay? Onions are like, you know, they make such a great base for just about anything you wanna do. There's a lot of flavor there that we, cooking is really about, in, in some ways, really about breaking down the sugars, and that's, that's really where the flavors start coming out, and, that's why we're gonna use onions here because it really kind of, it's like a good foundation to put everything else on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring out what I need here. So I need cumin seed, which I've already measured. I need some oregano. I need some garlic powder, right? Yeah, it would really be great if you would. <laughs> spices, specifically dry herbs and spices. Preference, grab whatever's available. Are there considerations for uh, vegan lifestyle, so on and so forth? As far as vegan, not so much. It, it's, it's really a question of the overall ethics in our food production. Okay. And, um, you know, I try to buy things that have been 
sourced fairly, especially if you're dealing with like vanilla or cacao or saffron, something where you know the workers have been considered in the whole equation. And to me, that's that's that would be the big thing with herbs and spices is finding. As far as um, Uh, Frontier is a spice company, Frontier, Frontier. Okay. and they, they have just about, just about their entire line can either be bought conventional or organic. They're very heavy on their organics, um, so they're, they're a good one to look for. Uh, uh, McCormick and those typical supermarket brands, not so much. Right. Yeah. And I try to, if you, if you have an opportunity, you'll notice I've got everything in different jars. If you have an opportunity to buy bulk, that's a lot better too, because you can determine how much you need, you can buy what you need, but also you're not paying extra for a jar. You know? So that makes it a lot more affordable to buy organic. It kind of offsets the price a lot. So it makes it more accessible, okay? Uh, smoked paprika, you should definitely come uh, see what this is like. Oh, by the way, she got it all crumbled up, and so it looks, you know, like it would fill a taco, okay? And I'm going to put this in and then throw our spices in. Okay. So, uh, you'll notice that I said ground chile. That's pretty awesome, huh? That's Yeah. Um, so, the reason I say ground chile as opposed to chili powder there's a reason for that. And when you uh, go to a store and you buy what's called chili powder, it's actually a mix of a lot of things. It's, um, it has some chili peppers in it that have been ground up, but it also has a lot of cumin and salt and, and then there's going to be a lot of uh, preservatives. But if you just go and buy something that says ground chipotle or ground ancho, it actually has a specific pepper name in it, it's just going to be that, which is, you know, you're going to, you, um, coming from my angle where, whoops, there you go. Hope that's making you feel good. I'm spilling like crazy back here. Um, it, it, you get better flavor and it also balances out other things. You're not like getting a, a spice blend that already has salt and then you're adding more salt. So just if that's important to you. I'm gonna put a little more oil in because uh, the tempeh is a bit dry. That's kind of normal. And we're gonna let this go. So I'm just gonna let that cook for a little bit, uh, the chorizo. And then when it's about time to take off the heat, I'm gonna pour in some tamari. Tamari, I've mentioned, is like soy sauce. So it's very salty and very intense. And I want to put it on at the last just so it you know, stays up on top. It doesn't all evaporate and you know, waste it. So I'll put that on at the end. Excellent. You can start doing that now. I would get that oil that you had a moment ago. And is, is tamari made from soy as well? It is. It is actually the, it's fermented uh, liquid from soybeans. And just like soy sauce is, it's fermented for a good long time. And Things that are labeled soy sauce typically have wheat in them as a binder, and tamari does not. So I try to use it just in case, in case that way I don't forget, oh yeah, you know, it's like, just go ahead and buy it that way, that way I've got it available. And um, so, but it's very salty. That's great, and go ahead and flip it over again. Yep, and you can use that, or you can use your hands. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, and you're welcome to just to line more up on here if you want to. Okay. And you can actually just pull them off to the side after you kind of get them soft. Okay. And then so after. You don't do it for long. Not long at all. No, no. Just to get them limber like that. And you can, as you go, you can offload them into there. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me see here. So, oh, I'm just going to put a little more pepper in here. Okay. So, any more questions on anything we've done so far? How do you know? Well, well, you don't eat it raw, but keep in mind, tofu and tempeh have already been cooked a lot. Yeah. So as far as the digestibility and stuff like that, they're they're already pretty well cooked. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually extremely uh, good on your system because of the fermentation and the the mold. But 
how long do you cook it? That's to get flavor. That's really the thing. So you're cooking it to get flavor. And I'm seeing it's starting to, to get a little darker brown. And that's what I'm looking for, is it to get a little darker brown. And to some degree, it is that, like you said first, eh, that's long enough. About five or 10 minutes or so. Yep. I'm gonna give this a taste just to make sure I've got, because it, it is a lot of tempeh, and I just wanna make sure that I've got enough seasoning in. Can you t taste that and tell the people how it is? Ooh. Are you gonna use, yeah. Is it really hot? Tell the people how it is, and you know what to say, right? <laughs> Yeah. Delicious. Very good. Really? You think so? Are you just saying that? Okay. So I'm going to call this done. That's good. So I'm going to turn that off. And if anybody wants to come take a look at that, you are welcome to. So we're going to make tacos with that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like I said, this right here, I could put in uh, enchiladas. I could. I could put in lasagna. So it's got really 101 uses. This is kind of like a little foundational thing. If you can make this, you can make, you know, a dozen. I would say 100, but that's kind of exaggerating. Mm -hmm. At least, at least two or three things you can make out of this. So this looks great. It's oh beautiful. <laughs> yeah. What's that? It, looks so good. it does. It does. So what are you having for lunch? Um. What are you guys having? <laughs> Cereal. Cereal. Yeah. Cereal and chips. Cereal and chips. Wow. I'm sorry about that. They didn't, they didn't tell you ahead of time? So I'm going to now finish that recipe up because I have a couple more things to put in, mostly just some, uh, some herbs at the end here, right? I need to put in my salt. Uh, and then I'll put in some uh, cilantro. Uh, this is just a basic run of the mill sea salt that I. Yeah, just to, yeah. It's very fine. This one is. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not coarse like kosher or anything. It's very fine, a fine grind sea salt. Chop up some cilantro to put in there, and any other thoughts? Because the chopping portion is where you you have to carry the show. <laughs> yes. It's usually at, at in the supermarket where the other Japanese foods are. Okay. In fact, that's where you can find the, the uh, hiziki as well, mm -hmm. uh, where we would find the nori uh, sheets and stuff like that. It's usually in that same section. There'll be, there, there'll be a lot of different oils like sesame and stuff like that in tamari as well. Um, when we're done, I'll look and see if they have one that has a label, that way you can uh, associate a label with it or a brand name. We're getting close to actually having lunch, so uh, <laughs> is there anything you would, you would like to ask? Just, you know, like he had one that wasn't totally related, but anything you want to know? The cilantro? Yes, sir. Um, do you usually, do you ever put it into like, say you're making a rice, putting it in when you first start as opposed to putting it in after? That is actually an excellent question. What I do is I use, if I use a fresh herb, I will put it in toward the end. Okay. Simply because its durability is pretty low. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to exhaust it before I'm done with the dish. Okay. I put it at the end, that way, you know, it, it, it has a chance to still, you know, produce flavor. Dried herbs, I think of them as kind of dormant. So you'll notice with, with the chorizo and with this, I put them in early. That's kind of like, let me wake them up first, let me, let me get their oils going again, and, and then they will season the food. Gotcha. Any other question before we? Wrap up. Okay. How many more do you have? You've gone through two packages? I oh, geez, say. you're almost done. Okay, so I'm going to then uh, kind of focus on chopping some romaine and dressing the salad and getting ready for lunch. Uh, if you don't have any other questions, and I'll be around during lunch, so just walk up and ask something. But thank you for being here. Thanks for coming to Farm Sanctuary to do the things that you're doing and, and to getting exposed to this and finding just a different, different things to think about. So. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Natalia? All right. All right, give us just a few minutes to kind of get things plated up. Mm -hmm.